evening, Art Hostage here and we're going to do another episode. Now there's been a sinister development in the um, ongoing battle between global law enforcement and um, the drug cartels because although when we hear of things going on in South America, um, it might seem a long way, right, but the world is a very small place now. Um, so I wanted to read you this article that's come out, right? It's um, right. Um, it's quite sinister and it's quite frightening, you know. And uh, you know, it's. To I want this episode's going to be called "Drug Cartels Strike Back." Now, the headline of the article is "Paraguay Anti-Drug Prosecutor Shot Dead on Honeymoon in Colombia." Paraguayan anti-drug prosecutor Marcelo Pecci was shot dead execution style Tuesday while honeymooning on a Colombian Caribbean island by attackers who fled by sea, police and his widow said. So they executed him and then they fled by sea. Obviously this was quite a um, professional execution. Paraguay's president denounced the crime as a cowardly murder and a fellow prosecutor said the modus operandi was reminiscent of the mafia. Pecci, 40, 45, was felled by two shots while relaxing on a beach on the idyllic tourist island of Baru, according to his wife, Paraguayan journalist Claudia Aguilera. The couple got married on April the 30th in the nearby city of Cartagena, Cartagena, sorry, C-A-R-T-A-G-E-N-A, -A -E Cartagena. Well, that's tragic, isn't it? Right, it's only the, it's the 11th today, right, it must have been yesterday, right, so 10 days they were married and he was murdered. He's laying on the beach, right, on the tourist island of Baru. Right, and then these assassins pull up in a boat, shoot him dead in the boat, and they're away. Jeez. Right, two men attack Marcelo. They came by sea in a small boat or on a jet ski. The truth is, I did not see well, Aguil um, Aguilera told the El Tempo newspaper. One of the assailants got out, and without a word, he shot Marcelo twice. One bullet hit, hit him in the face and another in the back, she described. Aguilera, who is pregnant, oh, Jesus Christ almighty. So he's married He's married his love, his sweetheart, she's pregnant, they're on the beach on honeymoon, right? And then two assassins in a small boat or a jet ski pull up to the resort, walk up, they don't say a word, one shoots him in the face and then in the back. And then they just turn around and escape. Oh, my... Oh, well, my heart bleeds for this poor lady. God, dear. Aguilera, who is pre pregnant, said her husband of less than two weeks had not received any threats. Yeah, you see, they're the dangerous ones. Forget about all them idiots who make threats on the internet and we're coming to look for you and all that bollocks, right? It's the ones that don't say anything. You know, I mean, I've had it all. They all threaten me, right? But to be honest with you, you know what I mean? Don't you just walk off a duck's back to me, right? And it's the ones who don't say anything you've got to be worried about, but you've always got to be prepared. But unbelievable. Can I just read that again? Aguilera, who is pregnant, said her husband of less than two weeks had not received any threats. The D. Cameron Hotel where the couple were stay staying, said in a statement that assassins arrived on the beach and attacked and murdered one of our guests. The motive for the killing was not immediately known, but Paraguayan prosecutor Augusto Salas, a colleague of Pecci, said the attack appeared typical of the drug mafia. So that is what I think until the contrary is proven. Colombian police chief Jorge Luis Vargas <clears throat> said five 
said five homicide investigators have been dispatched to Baru and will receive backing from the Paraguayan and US experts. Well, there is information being collected that will help us identify those responsible, Vargas said. Well, I think the first thing that should happen, right, is all prosecutors, all those people who are investigating all the cartels, right, all over the world, and that goes for him as well, right, John O'Driscoll, and I know he's a, a guardian that, all their personal security should be upped, ratcheted up, because um, this is the cartels fighting back. Now, yes, we're seeing it in South America with a Paraguayan um, drug prosecutor murdered on his honeymoon with his pregnant wife, right, but who's to say that it's not going to happen somewhere else, right? Okay, somewhere in maybe Ireland, right, somewhere in maybe the, even the US, right, or the UK, National Crime Agency, uh, top officers and that. I hope they're all going to check their personal security, right, in Spain as well, and even maybe in Dubai, right, where all the tentacles spread. Right, because, you know, the Kinnahans, we can all see that the Kinnahan cartel is dismantling as we speak. Okay, and it will be replaced by another cartel that will just slip in and take their markets, which I've spoken about. But, you know, um, a cornered rat is the most dangerous rat because you don't know when they lash out, you don't know what they're going to do. Okay. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, right? Well, but, I mean, I think authorities should assume that it could happen. Because the last thing we need to see, right, is um, prosecutors or police officers or drug enforcement agency officers or anyone like that targeted. Okay, we don't want to see that, do we? You know, law enforcement officials, whether they're prosecutors, whether they're police officers or whether they're guardy, FBI, right? UFAC, you know, the um, Office for the Treasury that have put the sanctions on the Kinnahans. Right, Janus, Mr. Janus, please up your security, right? Now, I know that, that you say me, Art Hostage, Turbo Paul, I always go over the top, don't I? Mr. Warrior, me, Mr. Warrior. But, I'm, you know, I'm an analyst. You know, I analyse these things. I've got 40 years' experience, okay? And it's like the old saying, when America catches cold, uh, sorry, when America sneezes, Europe catches cold. Well... Let's just say that South America has sneezed, right, with, with assassins, okay, and Europe could catch cold from that. You know, I'm hoping that, that, that this doesn't happen, right, but I think, you know, and even journalists and all that have got to be careful as well, even more so, because the backlash against, you know, a journalist that's been reporting on all these drug cartels being assassinated won't be, wouldn't be as bad as if it was, say, as I say, John O'Driscoll, Right, or, um, you know, any of the top law enforcement. Now, I'm not singling out O'Driscoll, but he's probably the man that has done more than anyone else, right, to bring down the Kinnahan cartel. I'm not saying they would target him or whatever, right? Well, you know, or, or journalists. Now, me, you know me, I just fucking talk about everything. I don't care, right? But I'm nobody, okay? But this is very, very important. You know, it's... um. You know, what a terrible thing to happen. Okay, and I just don't want to be having to sort of do another podcast in a couple of weeks' time where there's been a lawmaker or there's been a journalist or there's been someone that's been assassinated in Europe or America or anywhere associated with these drug cartels. But remember the saying, right? A cornered rat is a very, very dangerous rat. And at the moment, that rat is named Kinnahan and Associates. Right, and that um, hitman, what's his name? Is it Sean McGovern or something? Right, he's killed someone before. Okay, so, you, you know, it's, could, it's like the Wild West. Okay, right, so anyway, let's go back to the article. The in, there is information being collected that would help us identify those responsible, Vargas said. But that's like closing the door after the horse is gone. But let's take that as a warning, right? Let's not have to have some European police officer saying information's being collected on this assassination of a lawmaker or a reporter and we will identify 
those responsible and bring them to justice. Well, can't you just stop it happening in the first place? Late Tuesday, Colombian police released a photo of one of the presumed attackers wearing black Bermuda shorts and a beige Panama hat. Right, and there's, you know, I'm not going to make any jokes about this because this is a terrible thing that's happened and it's really frightening for a lot of people. And I do really hope that the security is going to be increased on all the lawmakers and journalists as well. Especially her, Nicola Talent, right? She's right, one of the number one um, reporters, right, who's been reporting on the Kinnahans for donkey's years. I'm just hoping that she's going to, you know, take precautions, as well as all the others, Eamon and all the, all the other reporters that have had the courage to sort of stand up and be counted. Colombian President Ivan Duque denounced the killing on Twitter and said that he had offered condolences to his Paraguayan counterpart, Mario Abdo Benitez, and vowed cooperation to find those responsible. You know, would it have hurt to the Paraguayan government who sent a couple of bodyguards with them? You know, I'm not saying they could have stopped them, but if they saw this dodgy looking jet ski with two geezers coming towards them, right, they could have, you know, they'd have, they'd have stood up with their guns and they'd have called off the assassination, I would have thought. They wouldn't have gone into a suicide mission. Unbelievable. If this man, right, he was top, uh, Petchy, right, he was the top drug prosecutor, right, he's on, he's on honeymoon with his bride who's pregnant, wouldn't have hurt for the um, Paraguayan government to send a couple of um, bodyguards or even someone for the Paraguayan embassy. Dear, oh dear. For his part, Benitez says on Twitter, the entire Paraguayan nation mourns this ca the cowardly murder of prosecutor Marcelo Pecci in Colombia. We condemn this tragic event in the strongest terms and we redouble our commitment to fight organised crime, he added. It's wearing me out reading this, honestly. Petchy's office said in a statement steps were being taken to provide assistance and guarantee the safety of his family. Again, bolting the door after the horse is gone. You should have thought of that before he went on holiday or on his honeymoon. Petchy had specialised in organised crime, drug trafficking, money laundering and terror financing. Well, fuck me, he's got the whole, he's got the full house, isn't he there? Right, talk about red flags. Petchy had specialised in organised crime, drug trafficking, money laundering and terror financing as a prosecutor. Do you know what I mean? One thing I would say about the United States, though, if that if he'd have been an American and he'd have gone on honeymoon, right, they would have definitely sent a couple of uh, bodyguards with him. He'd have been he'd have had special protection. Dear oh dear. Anyway, the U.S. Embassy in Paraguay offered its condolences to Petchy's loved ones and held his commitment, professionalism, and dedication to the fight against organised crime. Paraguay Attorney General Sandra. Quinones said Petchy had obtained important convictions in an 11-year campaign against cross-border and drug crime. He just wanted to enjoy his honeymoon in privacy, and that is why he had no security around him. Bollocks. Yeah, well, of course he's going to say that, right? But he just gets overruled, or you do what's called shadow security. You don't tell him, right? But he's he's surrounded by bodyguards, and he don't even he might not even know. He just wanted to enjoy his honeymoon in privacy. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. I would have just said, I'm sorry, Mister Petcher. Your work is so important, and your history that we can't take chances. I mean, it's like the President of the United States, Joe Biden, saying, "I don't want my security detail when I'm going on holiday with my wife, Jill Biden." You know what, the, the, the Secret Service would say, yes, Mr. President, okay, but we'll be there anyway. Do you know what I mean? Heads have got to, should roll over this. He should have been overruled. They should have demanded that he had security. And this story should be how the assassins were killed trying um, on the attempt. Oh, I'm not too happy about this. Do you know what I mean? A lapse in security. And I'll guarantee you, right, that there's all the lawmakers... 
okay, and all the police officers and all, the, all those people, prosecutors and everyone involved in the Kinnahan takedown, right, they're all walking around, right, with no security and everything, right, and it's not revealing anything, right, it's just, it's just the truth. You know, they're targets, right, they're sitting ducks. So someone's got to do something, right, about this. Anyway, let me read that again. He just wanted to enjoy his honeymoon in privacy, and that is why he had no security around him, she said. He was a great friend. He had announced to me that his wife was expecting a baby. Heartbreaking. The latest post on Aguila's Instagram account Tuesday showed... A couple embracing on a beach with a pair of baby shoes in the foreground. In what appeared to be a pregnancy announcement. God. Fucking heartbreaking. Other recent photos were of the couple's wedding and happy moments in Car, Tagnia and Barrow. Colombia, the world's largest con cocaine producer, is contending with a wave of violence despite a 2016 peace deal that disarmed the FARC guerrilla group and ended a near six-decade civil conflict. Fighting over territory and resources continues in parts of the country between dissident FARC guerrillas, the ELN rebel group, par paramilitary forces and drug cartels. For its part, landlocked Paraguay nestled between Brazil, Bolivia and Argentina <coughs> has become an important launch pad for drugs headed for Europe. <coughs> well, there there's the connection there directly, okay? So Paraguay is the launch pad for drugs headed for Europe, okay? And this is an assassination of one of the top prosecutors in Paraguay. So if you needed a connection to Europe and just not say, oh, that's on the other side of the world, South America, nothing to do with us, there is a connection that this particular place, Paraguay, is a launch pad for drugs headed for Europe. So there's a European connection. And who's to say, that? who's not to say that the next person that's going to be assassinated will be someone from Europe? I know I'm a ball Murray, right? This is probably one of the most heartbreaking um, articles I've read. Whew. Paraguay and Colombia have recently strengthened their alliance in the fight against organised and cross-border crime. And that's come from the Associated Free Press. Well, do you know what I mean? See how dangerous it is, right? You see, with these, with these cartels, right? And now the Kinnahans, right, turned it into a super drug cartel. Well, when there's a violent backlash, right, are we going to get a super violent back backlash? Are the killings that we see in South America going to come to the streets of Europe? You know, maybe even Dubai or whatever. But all I can say is that all the people that are involved with this Kinnahan cartel takedown all the reporters, all the lawyers, all the um, prosecutors, the police officers, all of them, right, need to reassess their own personal security. That's in um, that's in Ireland, the UK, Spain, France, Germany, Holland, the Netherlands, Belgium, Italy, all over. This is a wake-up call, this is. And I know it happened on the other side of the world, but we've established that Paraguay has got big connections for the drug cartels to Europe, okay? But this is a wake-up call. And I hope I don't have to come on and do another podcast about someone in Europe being assassinated, right? So, you know, less of the fucking dilly-dallying, right? And less of the messing around, right? Take them down. Do you know what I mean? All the fucking about. Or if you've already done it, just announce it to the public. Right, there's no delay now. 
Because as I said before, a cornered rat is a dangerous rat. And at this point in time, the word rat is um, a metaphor for the Kinnahans. And then once they've gone, the, the word rat will be a metaphor for the next group that comes up. And as I said to you before, they're all ready to go. And Eamon Dillon, the reporter, was on Nicola Talent's Crime World. And he said that, yes, that there is a Mr Big that is not in the news at the moment in, in Britain, UK and in Spain that are ready to take over and poised to take over the Kinahan markets. Well, I mean, I can just give you a snapshot of what I know, 100%. Right, one little group that are, that, that are a jockeying to take a slice of the Kinahan's market, and that's Joey Sanson, based in Spain, Mark Baker, based in Bali, Julian Ponder was based in Malaysia, and then in the UK, you got Terry Sanson Jr., Fredo, Fredo Sanson, you got the brother in law, Darren Barker, you got Jock McCracken. Right, the horse racing fraudster, right, and, and big time drug dealer. You got Brian Groves, big time drug dealer. Danny King, right, um, he's gormless, right, anyway. Danny King, he's not too bright. He can play football, but he's um, he's only got one brain cell. But, but there's one little group, right, that's ready to take over, right, and I haven't even bothered to inquire anywhere else. It's just that I know them, they're all Brighton boys, okay, where I came from. Right, scum of the earth, real scum, you know what I mean? Terrorise the people in Brighton, throwing their weight around, being aggressive and bullies. And remember, remember the episodes I did on bullies? Yeah, but all them I've just mentioned, right, all they are is bullies. Right, you get any one of them on their own, they've got no arsehole, they've got no balls. Right, they shit themselves. But when they're in a group or when they're tooled up, right, they think, that they're, they think they're big time Charlie potatoes. Right, they think they're really lemon. Lemon dash, flash. I think they're, you know, they think they're really the bee's knees, but they're not. They're not all bullies. You stand up to a bully, any one of them names I've mentioned, right, they'd all shit themselves if they were on their own. Right, but that's one little group. And I'm sure there are other um, uh, groups ready to take over. I mean, we know at the top of the tree, there's going to be Edin and Vassil are going to take over from the Kinahans, you know, right at the top of the tree. And Semyon Mogilevich from the Russian side and all this, Molineski and all of them. But as you filter it down, I told you, you know, I just know about these because they're Brighton boys, right? And people tell me things all the time. Not least Tony Connolly trying to give me the intelligence on Joey Sanson. And at the time, I had no interest in it, right? But it's only just come recently, right? That it's all been put together. So anyway, right, it's a 23-minute one, right, and I've, I've got a bit emotional. I'm very sorry about that because, um, you know, despite whatever side of the fence you're on, right, I don't think anyone can say, right, that Mr. Petchy, right, on his honeymoon, right, with his lovely wife, and they just announced that they're going to have a child together and she's pregnant, Right, deserves to be assassinated the way that he was assassinated. He didn't even need to be assassinated at all. You know, absolutely shocking. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely fucking heartbreaking it is, right? Heartbreaking. And let's, let's hope I don't have to do another one of these podcasts. Right, so all you reporters out there reporting on it, Nicola, all of you, right, write an article about all the people who are going to increase their security, security reviews, and you included as well. Okay, Nicola, because you're not bulletproof, right? And, I, you know, and the last thing anyone wants, right, is seeing anything happen to you or Eamon or any of the other reporters who have been reporting on it, and all the lawmakers. I mean, the game between the organised crime and the law enforcement, it's been a cat and mouse game. Okay, and that's the way it operates. You play the game. And at the end of the day, law enforcement have got a case against you. You then try to fight it through the judicial system, win, lose or draw. And that's how the game's played. Right? It's not played by killing prosecutors and killing um, lawyers. Because gangsters always come out with that old pony, that old bollocks, right? Is Oh, the only people that get killed are fellow gangsters and other heavy duty gangsters. It's, um, it's it, gangsters on gangster crime. 
okay, and innocent mem members of the public don't get killed or very rarely get killed. Well, law enforcement officials, right, are only doing their job. That's why they're not targeted. But anyway, right, this is episode 94, I think it is, and we're going to call this Drug Cartels Strike Back. Let's hope it don't hit Europe. Art Hostage, episode 94, signing off. I'm bloody heartbroken.